Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second session of today, which is Opportunities and Challenges for Commercial and Industrial Uses of Heat. So we have uh, today four experts who will be talking about this uh, subject, and uh, it will be moderated by Rani Alechkar from uh, the Lebanese Centre for Energy Conservation. So, uh, right, so Araceli, if you can uh, stop sharing the screen, and then I'll uh, it's over over to you, Rani. Good morning, everyone. So we are starting this session on the opportunities and challenges for commercial and industrial users of heat. I am Rani Al Ashkar. I am from Lebanon, from the Lebanese Center for Energy Conservation and uh, I will be your moderator for this session. So we have an interesting panel of uh, heat and concentrated heat experts from the region. They will talk about how they use heat, what uh, their challenges are, and what are their concerns in adopting concentrated solar heat. Mm -hmm. We have with us um, Hamad Swayte from uh, Jordan. Um, we also have uh, Mukhtar uh, Ghazwani uh, from Morocco. He's replacing Mr. Mohsin Bouya as well. Uh, we have Wael Zmirli from Lebanon. Um, we also have Pedro Horta from uh, Evora University from Portugal, um, who was heavily involved in the MENA CSP KIP activities as well. Uh, before we tackle the region or country specific uses of heat, the specific challenges, the concerns related to concentrated solar heat, uh, Pedro will give us a brief overview on the potential, on the technology, uh, on the integration in the existing systems, and on the impact of financing solutions. Pedro, uh, please introduce yourself and uh, start your presentation. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rani, uh, for this introduction. Uh, well, I would like to, first of all, to, to thank the, the World Bank for this invitation and to salute uh, for the organization of this event, which definitely gathers uh, an important group of uh, panelists with experience in these topics, uh, among whom I can find so many colleagues and partners with whom I have been working uh, in this topic in these recent years. So my, my salute to, to everyone. Um, so as Rani was, uh, was saying, I would like to present uh, an overview of, of what's the potential, what are the technologies, uh, the technical and financial questions which we still face today uh, when talking about process heat, uh, talking about concentrated solar heat. Um, uh, well, the, the discussions around uh, energy are very frequently uh, focus on electricity and I, I like to present this first slide for people which are not so well aware of this fact to understand that energy is much more than electricity and definitely when we look into the, 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 the weight of uh, process heat in the final energy consumption we can see that it stands for about one quarter of the worldwide final energy consumption so definitely we see in here very large potential for applications of solar energy. Um, when we look a bit closer into different sectors um, and the temperature uh, and the range of uh, temperature for industrial applications of heat, uh, we can see that uh, well, 58% of the final energy consumption um, is related to the so-called energy intensive sectors these sectors tend to have high temperature processes but overall among the, the industrial sector we can see that there is a split an alpha half split on final energy consumption between high temperature processes and medium and low temperature processes and this uh, this fact is very important when uh, looking into what are the available uh, technologies uh, for the conversion of solar energy into heat and today we have available in the market technologies which cover already the full low and medium temperature range of applications. So 
this webinar is uh, focusing on the use of concentrated solar heat. So we go to the higher range uh, of these uh, temperatures. Uh, so definitely temperatures going up to 400 degrees. And as it was already stated here by other panelists, uh, this tackles not only most of the heat requirements of the non-energy intensive sectors, but also of some energy int int intensive sectors, such as the, the chemical sector. So definitely there are needs. These needs stand, stand for a very high potential. So it's one quarter of the overall worldwide final energy consumption. So this is a big number. And the solar thermal technologies can tackle half of these, of these needs. So definitely we are talking about a very large potential for these applications. Uh, well, of course, we can see that uh, these applications are there, the technologies are there, uh, but still the market could not, uh, could not grow at a, at a sizable pace. Uh, there are some questions which, uh, which uh, become a barrier uh, to the penetration of these technologies in the market. Um, so, of course, dissemination is important. Lack of awareness, this was already referred in the, in the previous panel. Uh, I would like to focus here on some uh, technical questions which have already been addressed. Um, so, one of them has to do with the, how, how, how are we going to integrate? Uh, solar heat into existing facilities. And so basically there are two strategies. Uh, we, we can go directly into the heat supply system, so around the boiler, that's what we normally find in industry is a boiler. Uh, and we can, uh, we can integrate solar uh, energy directly close to the, to the supply point. This is normally the, the, the integration mode which uh, faces less resistance uh, by end users, but also it's prone to more inefficiencies. Uh, another approach would be to integrate solar energy directly in processes, which normally faces bigger resistance because of course the end users don't like to, to change their processes, but definitely we can find opportunities for higher efficiency of this integration. So these questions are there. Um, there are solutions, there are technical solutions. There has been a lot of research uh, along these topics. And uh, definitely we have already uh, good examples of commercial projects uh, where both these integration modes uh, have been involved. Then we also have uh, control strategies. Uh, and I would like to, to focus a bit uh, on, these, on these two small pictures I have on the slides. Um, this picture uh, was uh, was published by by an industrial company. It's Industrial Solar. They will be in the next panel. Um, and and this this monitoring data comes from one of their uh, installations. And what we can see uh, in this graphic is that uh, so this stands for a direct steam generation facility. And um, after the, the the integration of uh, of their system in an existing company, uh, so integrating supplying. Uh, steam to the steam network already existing in the company that actually with their control system it was possible to have a more stable pressure on the steam line after the solar was integrated so definitely control strategies are very important they have been studied there are already solutions in the market which render this integration easy and reliable also another question has to do with the lack of space we often find um, in industrial sites. Uh, rooftops either are not available or don't have space available or for instance are based in light covers and also on that regard there are already developments of new technologies, new products. Uh, I, I bring here an example of a project that uh, we uh, here in Portugal have been developing along the past years uh, and so this for instance is a is a solar collector which enables installation in even in vertical facades uh, to operate at temperatures which go up to 200 degrees uh, with fairly good efficiency. So um, definitely we have a number of technical questions which have been addressed already um, on which the market can respond with uh, technically feasible solutions. Um, finally, to present to, to finish my, my overview, Another question uh, which has to do with financing. So definitely financing is a, a non-technical barrier 
for the for the for a larger uh, penetration of this technology into the markets. And what I bring in here uh, is uh, on the left side you can see actually the results of the study uh, was developing also with the World Bank on competitiveness of concentrated solar heat. And what we could find is that for the MENA region, for instance, uh, and depending on uh, on the solar resource available on different sites, but that we can find uh, critical levelized costs of heat. And by critical, I mean the costs of heat, which would render uh, investments uh, economically viable um, in the range of 100 to 50 US dollars per megawatt hour, hour roughly. These are average conditions for the for the countries in the MENA region. So country by country, we can see different situations. But definitely what this shows us is that already today, these investments are economically viable in a number of countries, uh, also depending on the kind of fuel we are, we are uh, replacing. But these, uh, but, but these results show that already today, uh, we, can, uh, we can achieve uh, economic viability with current energy costs. And uh, it's important to understand that the, the, the level of costs of it I'm presenting in this, in this picture, they would stand for 25 years. So of course, everyone knows the energy costs today, but uh, who can assure uh, the costs of heat in five, 10, 20 years? And definitely concentrated solar heat has the advantage of fixing the cost of energy along the investment lifetime, which is definitely uh, an important advantage. And on the right, I try to illustrate the impact of the investment assessment approach. So either we go on a payback period approach, which is often the criteria used by industrial end users, or we go to a net present value approach, which is often the, the approach used by utilities, for instance. And uh, so the graphic uh, on the right shows, uh, these are results uh, I was working on recently for Portugal, but this could be applied for pretty much all the countries in the MENA region as well. And what we can see is that if we look into these investments on a payback period approach, so five years payback period, we can see that we could not find viability in any location in Portugal. This considers average technology costs, average energy prices, considers no subsidies and no revenues from avoided emissions as well. But if you look into the investments from the net present value approach, we could see that all of, in, in any region, these investments would be viable. So definitely this illustrates the need for financing mechanisms and definitely for the role, of, for the very important role of ESCOs uh, in this game of concentrated solar heat. Uh, so this is pretty much what I would like to, to present you, to give you this overview of uh, opportunities technologies, technical questions, but also important financial questions. These questions will be addressed in the, in the next panels and I'm very happy to, I'm very glad to, to see that. And uh, so I will be open now for, for your questions. Um, so you're welcome for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pedro, for the, um, uh, for the presentation. I kindly invite everyone to send their comments in the Q&A uh, tab at the, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we already have one question, but uh, we expect much more. Um, and now, um, our first country-specific intervention is from uh, Mohammed Swaiti from Jordan. Um, Mohammed will guide us through the challenges and opportunities for concentrated solar heat in Jordan. And uh, he will also explain about the solution that was implemented at uh, JTI that covers a share of the steam cons consumption for the industrial process, as well as cooling and heating uh, demand. Hamad, please uh, briefly introduce yourself and start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Rani. So I'm Mohammed Swati from uh, JTI Manufacturing Jordan. Uh, I'm the head of engineering, and uh, I'm going to present like our end user experience in our solar steam generation uh, the system that implemented in 2017 uh, for direct steam for our processes. Okay, so uh, let me share. Uh, uh, 
uh, let me share my presentation. So uh, I will start with um, our group sustainability strategy because investing in, in this technology and investing in renewable energy solutions uh, been um, like a commitment uh, that driven by uh, our group strategy, which has three pillars on human rights, environment impact, and business standards. And this, according to our strategy, uh, directly linked to the environmental impact that we are committed uh, in protecting all the uh, actually aspects in our operations and business um, uh, units all over the world. Uh, furthermore, JTI Group um, is, is committed uh, and uh, put in, in a plan and its a strategy uh, a very um, uh, challenging uh, targets related to uh, car productions and renewable energy uh, implementation and utilization. So uh, we already set a target to reduce uh, our greenhouse gas emissions by 35%. Uh, and for, uh, from our uh, factories and business units by 2030 and also to achieve a 100% renewable electricity uh, generation in 2050. Uh, speaking of which, I will move specifically to Jordan and how this starts and why JTI Group selected Jordan uh, to start uh, such a pilot project and innovative uh, solution. Uh, Jordan, as uh, of course introduced, um, is like a sun-built country, has like uh, around 300 sunny days uh, with an average annual flux rate of uh, 2,000 2, kilowatt hour per square meter. Also, Jordan has like a potential uh, to grow more in the renewable energy and in the in the in the heating actually uh, aspect, especially that we are talking about twenty percent approximately of the final energy demand uh, is 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 going to the industrial sector, and around sixty percent of this industrial energy is used for the process heating. Speaking of which, I'm going to take you through our actual breakdown of energy. So in our factory in specific, we are um, using around 30 million megajoule per annual, uh, while the 20% of them are going for heating. And we're using LPG uh, for that, either for the process or for domestic use. After the implementation, we managed to uh, uh, convert around 60% to uh, a solar driven uh, resource and currently we are generating around 1.8 million uh, megajoule uh, out of our solar steam generation this is like a short video i hope Okay, so uh, I just uh, put the information that mentioned in the video over here as well, so everyone can uh, see uh, the figures. Those figures uh, indicates the capacity uh, of the of the system and the numbers that generated when we started uh, the study and implemented the system in the first place. Uh, and we've been uh, in operation for the system uh, since uh, more than two years and did uh, some improvement on it because the technology itself, as Pedro maybe mentioned, and even he, he showed uh, one slide that related to, to our uh, system, uh, it is actually uh, had some concern uh, when we started uh, related to the process and the controls and the integration with the, with the STEAM network. Uh, why we did this and we invested 1.7 million uh, of CAPEX on this uh, project. Uh, first thing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is it is important for us to do the right thing 
uh, and to, to, to drive the commitment and to, to be the pioneer and leaders in, 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 in this commitment uh, indeed. On the other side, one of the uh, major concerns that we want to share the application and spread it all over our uh, business units and manufacturing centers. In order to do that, we found that we need to contribute more in the R&D and investing on the researches where uh, it will result like a, um, I would say a greater benefit for all uh, applicators and all actually OEMs and also all uh, end users. Uh, by uh, the continuous R&D, we believe that this 1.7 million uh, will reduce gradually uh, by 20 to 30 percent in a couple of years. Uh, that means uh, the system performance uh, shall actually reach and unlock the technology and help it to be available and more cost feasible uh, to all end users in the in the future. Um, going to the system in specific, so uh, the the system um, as mechanism is a straightforward. While the technology and the features, it is remarkable because each single feature of that uh, is is responsible and contributing in a way or another. In, in increasing the performance and get the best of uh, the the output outcome sorry of the system to our network as well. So uh, the system uh, uh, basically is is a furnace um, uh, matters were co collected together uh, while the the uh, input would be like um, a processed water or RO water uh, that uh, goes uh, through uh, some absorption tubes and collect uh, the, the uh, solar uh, heat uh, and turn it in this timber to the uh, steam. So the steam here uh, can reach up to 20 bars, uh, while our actually manufacturing process uh, demand is around uh, five to seven bars. So that means we have the privilege to store uh, steam as much as we can then start to, uh, I would say, deplete and consume it uh, gradually as per our need. Uh, also, the system has a circulation uh, feature, which is uh, basically when we have a mixture of steam and hot water, at a at at certain point, the hot water will go back to the, to the uh, loop, making uh, the steam generating the process more efficient and more uh, quick as well, compensating whatever uh, we are consuming in the process. On the other hand, uh, the, the whole system is integrated with our conventional steam generating bo generation boilers. Uh, that means that there, there is like a control uh, unit uh, that um, measures exactly what, what would be the threshold of the pressure and with the, when it is actually beneficial or I would say operational, uh, uh, better to use the uh, steam boiler uh, rather than the solar or the solar rather than the steam boiler and of course that depends on the weather condition the amount of steam that we have generated and stored in the buffer and also the demand and the flow uh, that we are demanding on the uh, shop floor um, this is actually the uh, furnace uh, collector technology uh, so all of, of, of those collectors uh, were individually tracked uh, uh, row by row to the sun location uh, to increase uh, the the amount of uh, sun flux that we are collecting and reflecting to the secondary receiver, which has like the vacuum absorber tube. Also, uh, we are talking about like the, the support structure itself. Itself, it's like uh, a lightweight. Uh, in the in the in the in the other hand, it's a robust and like uh, uh, can resist the wind, the weather conditions, and uh, not affecting our building. Uh, structure uh, harmfully. So this is a more specific, um, I would say, number. Uh, while maybe Pedro shared like a wider uh, view, but this is concerning one month, which is August uh, 2018, where you can see that the direct normal uh, radiation is like reaching around the 800, uh, and also uh, the pressure that we we could collect in the steam. Uh, buffer uh, reaches the 20 uh, bars where our uh, consumption demands uh, talking about like uh, uh, five bars in, in pressure and uh, lower than 100 Celsius in temperature. So regarding the improvements, which more by the way are less related to the steam network itself, 
and having like more, uh, I would say, efficient uh, blowing down mechanism and more uh, traps, um, effective traps uh, in place and less, uh, I would say, steam losses uh, that occurred by the switch between the two systems or by the network itself. By that only, we could have, uh, have like a more consistent generation, zero breakdown recorded in 2019, and uh, we increased the performance uh, by 20% according to this supply demand ratio, reaching around 70% of um, of actually our demand covered by solar steam generation, uh, while in, if we turn that into uh, uh, US dollars, that means around 60,000 um, US dollar uh, per annum uh, generated by uh, the solar steam generation, while our LPG bell in total is around 100, uh, of course, without the solar steam generation is reaching around 100, Twenty thousand uh, dollars. Muhammad, could you please in, in, wrap up? Muhammad, uh, you have yes. one minute less. Le, le, you exceeded yeah. your time. Please wrap up as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay. Finally, uh, as a byproduct, we have implemented an absorption chiller, where simply uh, can cover around like ten to fifteen percent of our demand just using the excess steam if we have, or like if we have off uh, production uh, to produce also. Uh, cooling uh, demand for our factory. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Muhammad, for the very interesting uh, pr pr presentation. Uh, we saw the integration within the, um, uh, the the system, and we saw the different parts of uh, of your systems as as well as uh, the the benefits. Let us continue with uh, Mukhtar Ghazwani from Morocco. Um, Mukhtar will talk about the Moroccan needs um, for concentrated heat for the industrial as well as the res residential sector. Uh, he will also talk about the most developed solutions in this regard in Morocco. Mukhtar, please uh, introduce yourself briefly and start your presentation. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is Mokhtar Razwani. I'm a PhD at the International University of Rabat. Uh, we are working here uh, in uh, the solar, in uh, majorly in the solar technology and all what's about uh, solar heat technology, specific with the uh, with low and medium temperature. So this is what I will present you uh, you today. It's our experience in our university and uh, all the research that we done and the product that we produce now for making an, uh, a future spin-off with the university. Okay, let me, I, I will share my presentation. Okay. 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 Uh, so as I say, we are presenting uh, today uh, majorly the product that we were made in the International University of Rabat. So the idea here is to to challenge and uh, show the opportunity that we can make with uh, the with Morocco with the government of Morocco how we can integrate the solar energy and uh, at the end we will show two products about uh, the low temperature as a, a solar water heating and a concentrated uh, a parabolic collector for industry so firstly let's let's uh, show some data for uh, for uh, for Moroccan uh, demand about uh, the conception, the final total con conception of Moroccan energy. Here we can see, here we can see like there is account more than 68% uh, of the conception in Morocco. It's in foil, uh, foil oil, and the major sector it's food and tobacco, textile. This is like this is the sector that we want to integrate our technology, and this is for industry. For residential, uh, we will find like a lot of uh, conception, more than conception, it's also about gas, uh, gas and uh, oil. And this is for cooking and washing 
and this kind of, uh, this is the most like the most important part of conception here in Morocco about residential for our this is like this is the kind of what we can replace in Morocco about the energy and uh, we want to uh, we want to place which which sector we will have to integrate it and focus to 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 integrate and uh, show the potential of our uh, uh, solar systems and how it's possible and will be very interesting to integrate it so for morocco the idea which uh, what's very good in morocco that we will see like here with the uh, with the global horizontal irradiation like we have like almost an average of 2000 kilowatts kilowatt uh, hour per mid square which is very interesting and very potential for morocco and also for the dna which there is a, a major region a lot of region here especially in Warzaz, the region of Warzaz, where the solar node is installed now so there is a lot of potential in term of solar irradiation here in morocco that's allowed to make moroccan moroccan uh, the concentrated solar head it's very competitive compared to diesel or uh, fuel, uh, fuel oil this is like the our target and uh, what we government talking about with us that's the idea like we are the specific sector that we want to to work with and uh, to 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 put our product for him to make a very good competitive uh, replacement of uh, of uh, conception of fossil fossil energy and uh, you can we can see like the most major of the the sector or uh, the uh, the industry or the the process who need energy it's almost in the medium temperature like between 90 degree and 200 degree which is very good if we compare like uh, mr pedro show this is the figure uh, this is like this is the target that we want to develop our solution and this is what the mission in the last five years why is to develop a solution in a very and uh, in, uh, in a lot of uh, uh, equipment the uh, idea is to develop a technology who can cover from the less to the medium medium high temperature so uh, here I'm showing like like it's a kind of uh, a resume of our uh, department of uh, solar energy like this is the major technology and process and uh, uh, of our patents that it's already patented and uh, in Moroccan uh, property intellectual property so we find here like this this is the like the most uh, important product that we have here there is the uh, solar water heating and uh, solar water heating and the concentrated solar power let's present first the the thermal solar water heating this is the this is like uh how to say that this is like uh, a lot of work that it's done for to give this product because was the objective for us was is to 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 give a low cost product with a very high performance compared to other products in the market so we want to make to integrate our competitive product with a good price for moroccan citizens and in meantime give the same performance or more high the performance for uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, uh, the efficiency of uh, of the of this technology so the idea here it's low cost morocco we we just bring uh, we just import the 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 tubes the heat pipe tubes and the our the tank it's made in Morocco so the idea was to develop a new technology to develop a, a concept a low cost technology here in Morocco so like the most the most idea was is the is is uh, to give uh, a reduced uh, reduce the price and increase the performance i don't want to say i don't i don't want to give a lot of data just showing the product that we developed but the most important for me is the as we as the theme of the presentation is the 
uh, is the technology of solar parabolic, the small uh, parabolic clock start that we, that we developed here in uh, in the university. So the industrial process here, application here in Morocco, it's the process temperature up to 250, as I show in the last figure. So the objective here was to minimize the total year energy and maximize the energy and efficiency solar power. This is our uh, was the target for us for this product. So uh, our 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 uh, work, it's uh, you, you you can find uh, our work. It's uh, it's published also in uh, in uh, in uh, renewable energy. So uh, we can find here that our products can give like uh, LCOH uh, less than two point two 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 USA dollar kilo per kilowatt hour. The, the work was done and uh, after that we we made a conception and uh, make like uh, made a conception and the technology to install it and tested the performance which the objective was to give a solution made in Morocco made in the local Morocco made local industry and uh, give a performance that the system can achieve 200 degree for uh, for industrial Moroccan and adapt it to all the manufacturing, the textile, the food, the tobacco here in Morocco using just uh, oil or use the, just the heat transfer fluid. It depends. We can use it the both. Yes, it showed us the direct steam generation. It's very good compared to the oil, but the idea here is to, pre to present a product that it's adapted and can be integrated easily to all industry here in Morocco. Also with the Mokhtar, you have one minute, please. Okay, okay. Uh, also, we develop. It's uh, it's very it's very quickly. I will done now. Uh, uh, also, we develop like uh, for the system. We develop a local uh, system that it's now it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a very major like the solar system tracking for this tracker system. It's adapted for all the technology that we can do it here. Uh, so this is like uh, the 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 test that we do we do for the system. Uh, our small PTCs, our small parabolic collector that we made and we compare a lot of hybridization for this system. The objective was to give a minimum LCOH. We made with the CPC and also we made it with the boiler, all the hybridization, all the scenario, and all the management energy that we can done. Uh, this is like for uh, the application, the current application, the industry that we are working now. I will be very fast. Uh, the application is uh, the maintenance on heat, a butamin storage. So the idea is to keep the butamin at the liquid the phase you have to maintain in the head at 160 so this is the industry that you work in it's local butuma it's a uh, moroccan manufacturer who make a distribution of butumen so the idea here it's uh, to to maintain the head with using during the day uh, using a parabolic star collector so the, the the technology that we develop we are trying now to to integrate the in the in uh, its under construction we, we integrate we are in, uh, integrated in the manufacturing and uh, the LCO it show less than uh, 0 0.03 uh, USA US dollar per kilowatt hour and the average fraction that we will achieve in the in the summer which be 50 percent thank you thank you for your attention and I'm very happy to to be here thank you thank you uh, Mukhtar um, our final intervention uh, before the Q&A is from Wael Zmirli from Lebanon Wael will elaborate on the different uses of heat in commercial buildings, the different technologies and solutions that are used in Lebanon, and um, that are or are starting starting to gain some uh, some momentum. Uh, Wael will conclude with the challenges of concentrated solar heat, and um, hopefully will propose some solutions. Uh, please, you know the, the drill. Uh, introduce yourself briefly and start the presentation. Uh, I am Wael Zmirli from uh, Tripoli, Lebanon. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, owner of a company Zmirli for smart heating. It is a private uh, company uh, working in the every, every kind of heat uh, and especially with the solar uh, heating. Uh, also, I am uh, uh, owner of uh, Zmirli Academy for heating, heating academy. So we talk about uh, uh, the possibility of uh, using the heat for commercial buildings in uh, Lebanon. What is the current situation and what can we do for future? 
So the, the uh, main use for heat uh, are for space heating. The must uh, heat is used for space heating, for domestic hot water also, uh, for process water heating in commercial building, and for uh, spa, swimming pool, and uh, others. So let's uh, talk about every kind of heat use. Uh, for space heating, we, we use two kinds, uh, radiators or underfloor heating. Uh, the radiators uh, need usually uh, from 50 degrees up to 80 degrees uh, Celsius. And the underfloor heating, uh, for the underfloor heating, we use 45 uh, degrees. So it is a low temperature heating. Uh, what kind of heat source we use for uh, this? Usually we use the gas boiler or fuel oil boiler. M mainly in Lebanon, we use more uh, fuel boilers. Uh, we can use also solar uh, panels, solar heating, uh, solar uh, heating support. So we can use the solar to heat our uh, homes or our buildings. Uh, it's not easy in the winter to find the, the necessary uh, solar for your heat, but it needs some attention. You can uh, do it, especially with the low temperature uh, heating. And by the way, our uh, building, our uh, office building in uh, Zmirli and Co is using uh, solar heating for the, uh, the solar panels for the heating. And also we can use the heat pump, especially for low temperature heating. Uh, also the heat pump, uh, uh, for example, if we are using 35 degrees, it can give a COP up to uh, five, which is very nice uh, using with the low temperature heating. For domestic hot water uh, preparation, also, there's two kinds, uh, accumulation or instantaneous uh, hot water. The accumulation, we, we put the heat uh, in a, a tank, uh, and uh, the volume uh, usually is big. And uh, for the instantaneous, we use heat exchangers. The temperature used in hot water, the inside, inside the tank, we need 60 degrees, but uh, we need 80 degrees to heat the tank. Also for the heat exchangers, we need 80 degrees to produce the hot water. This uh, 80 degrees are coming also from uh, boilers, uh, from steam generators, if it, it is available for uh, commercial buildings, from solar panels, of course, we use it always for the domestic hot water. And also heat pump can be used for uh, the production of hot water at, at maximum uh, 50 degrees uh, with acceptable uh, COP. So this is for the production of domestic hot water in commercial buildings. For spa, we can use for uh, the heat for swimming pools and for uh, jacuzzi. The swimming pools need 28 need to be heated to 28 uh, eight degrees. So the heat to be given to the, the pool must be between also 50 to 80 degrees to heat the swimming pool. Also for the jacuzzi, we can start from 60 to 80 to reach 40 degrees uh, in the jacuzzi. For this, we can use, of course, the boilers, fuel or gas boilers. We can use the heat pump because these are low temperature uh, heating. And it is, for, for me, it is a must preferable to use with the swimming pool uh, is the heat pump because we can reach very high uh, COP with the swimming pools uh, around the year. Solar panels are also used uh, for uh, swimming pools and for uh, jacuzzi, but also we use unglazed solar absorber, which is also uh, cheap and give good uh, result with the swimming pools. For industrial uh, process water, uh, we can use it for industrial kitchens, uh, dishwashing, laundry, uh, washing or drying, and for industrial uh, ironing. Uh, in the kitchen, we need 70 degrees, but the other machines need uh, steam, 170 degrees at uh, 10 bars usually. So all this kind of heat need uh, steam generator to, to be heated. So here, uh, this uh, this usage is uh, the, opti the optimal one to use with the CSH, uh, if I'm not wrong. So 
is it possible to use the CSH with this kind of use? Uh, for the, this kind of where I talk, uh, for the pro production of hot waters, water, of course, whenever you, you can reach a high temperature with CSH, you can use it for lower temperature. So of course you can use it for heating, for the swimming pool, why not? And for all industrial uh, usage. So if we can do all of this with CSH, why in Lebanon it is not so used? Uh, I think it is a starting uh, uh, technology and a few, only a few projects are now implemented. Uh, for for uh, engineers and for consumers, they think that uh, th there is a lack of space. And usually we have lack of space to use solar and also CSH. Lack of expertise. A, lot, uh, a few engineers only know about uh, how to design uh, the system for CSH. Higher price. It's dangerous because it's high temperature comparing with other technologies, uh, but not the steam boilers, of course. It needs more maintenance and it needs uh, volume, uh, storage volume uh, for, uh, for, for if you want to use it for heating or for swimming pool or other. So what we should, what should we improve to, to use this uh, CHS, uh, Lebanon CSH? We need a concentrated training for mechanical consultant. The mechanical consultant are the must influencer in this, not, not the other people working with the solar energy. Uh, these are the designer of the projects. Also, we need some exhibi exhibitions, uh, conferences uh, to, tackle, to tackle the decision maker, makers who are the project's own, uh, owners subsidizing and incentives, uh, provide free software for the engineers for the calculation of the system. We need some visits to factory and sites. And also we need Lebanon to install some prototypes uh, with a monitoring system to show uh, how this system are uh, working. So the current situation in a commercial building is like this. We are using solar energy, uh, flat collector or vacuum tube or ungla unglazed, we use heat pump, we use the uh, boilers uh, and uh, steam boilers. And we hope in the future, we can reach this situation using the CSH. Thank you very much. This is my presentation. Thank you, Wael. Thank you everyone for keeping uh, your time uh, allocation. Um, I, I, I will ask maybe uh, one, one question. We have five minutes left. Um, so um, there was one, one, one of the questions in the Q&A was that um, uh, countries often in their decarbonization efforts, they go for uh, uh, renewable electrification or for higher electrification rates. And uh, uh, you see that renewable heat or uh, concentrated solar heat is not as popular uh, with uh, um, policy makers as, as it should be. Um, do you have... Um, Pedro, do you have a reflection on this uh, on this matter? Gary, I'm afraid I was answering to a question and I could not hear yours. So could you please repeat? Uh, yes, uh, in, in the effort for uh, decarbonization of different countries, they focus on higher electrification rates, on clean uh, electricity. However, uh, clean heat or uh, or concentrated solar heat is not as popular with, with policy makers as it should be. Sure. Why do you think uh, this is the uh, case? Well, uh, definitely, as, as I started uh, claiming in my presentation, there is, there is uh, very frequently a, a, a confusion between energy and electricity. And this, of course, goes against uh, whatever are thermal applications. So definitely there is some lack of knowledge of what actually process it stands for in terms of final energy consumption. Uh, so this is a problem. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if we look into the decarbonization strategies being followed by different countries, we see a tendency of increasing the weight of electricity in the final energy consumption, which definitely is an interesting strategy as to have a higher penetration of renewables in the energy mix, but of course, has some shortcomings. Me personally, uh, me personally, I see quite a few technical obstacles into electrifying 
heat consumption in industry. This can be achieved in some cases, in others I see it more difficult. So definitely process heat will always have an important role. Um, so in the end, when we talk about the decarbonization, we are not talking about solar or wind or biomass. We are always talking about a combination of all these solutions. What is important from my perspective is for the public to be aware that solar thermal technologies and in particular concentrated solar energy can definitely be a solution, a very interesting and viable economically and technical solution in many parts of the country. So that's what I believe it's important to, to, to convey. So in short, we don't just need concentrated training, uh, trainings for uh, engineers. We also need some concentrated trainings for uh, um, or awareness for policymakers and, uh, and, and the public. Absolutely. On, uh, on Absolutely. This, uh, issue. Absolutely. Um, uh, another, an, uh, another question, uh, we saw that um, um, we saw applications in the residential sector, we saw applications in the commer commercial buildings, uh, we saw in industrial uh, processes, but these were limited to a, a specific uh, building, a specific process. How about uh, concentrated solar heat for neighborhoods, for districts, for uh, 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 industrial uh, zones, for example? Yes, this this definitely is a, is a, is an interesting approach. We can see already quite a few examples of uh, large commercial systems for district heating in northern in northern European countries, for instance. So this is definitely a good example of uh, companies supplying heat for district heating. So this is already on the market. It exists. It is commercially viable. Uh, definitely the use of uh, centralized uh, heat production systems in industrial parks, I see it as a very interesting approach, as it enables not only to have a high penetration of solar, but also all the renewables, and most important, to have also an integration of waste heat, which we can find very often in large amounts on industrial sites. Uh, and if we can combine the different needs of energy of different industrial companies on a single site, then decentralized systems can definitely become a very good solution. How about district cooling? Well, the same. The same applies to district cooling, of course. And uh, well, if we talk about CSH, one of the applications could be also cooling, of course. Okay, uh, we have two minutes left. I want each of the speakers to, to in one sentence, to, 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 to suggest uh, some um, measure or something to uh, increase the potential or to overcome the challenges that were uh, mentioned in, in, in the different presentations in the different countries. One sentence each, please. Okay, um, I'll, I will start. So the idea, uh, if I concentrate in the future, I will make it very simple. Uh, just collect heat wherever you can and use it wherever you could. I think uh, the good idea and uh, the good strategy to have it for the solar heat, solar concentrated heat, it's to, to, to prepare uh, the potential of human and uh, the potential for people who can develop it and uh, go more in this kind of technology. But the idea for the integration it's uh, more important to work about how the possible uh, local country can develop the products and give her own products uh, and to give a capital human who will be able to work and uh, to develop more this uh, this technology well okay uh, the CSH uh, can be used in uh, every kind of heat and we have the sun we have the sun in our country, for, so why not? We should use it. Pedro, one final word. Uh, well, uh, the needs are identified, the technologies are there. There are barriers, of course, but they are not impossible to solve. So I believe that uh, CSH can definitely have an important role uh, in the decarbonization of the industry. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending the, the session. Thank you for the, for the questions and answers. Most of them were answered uh, directly by the, by, by the speakers. Thank you, Carlos and Jonathan.
So tune in to the next session. Thank you very much, uh, Rani, and to all our speakers and, and to the, the audience for, um, you know, for tuning in today. So um, we will um, have a, a short break and we'll get back in about five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.